Uh, I'm John Crown. Uh, I'm a consultant medical oncologist in St. Vincent's University Hospital, Dublin, uh, a professor in Dublin City University and the chairman uh, of the Breast Committee of the Irish Clinical Oncology Research Group. The data we presented here were an update on a, what I believe is a very important clinical trial, which compared two different treatment strategies in, in a very difficult-to-treat group of patients. These are ladies who had HER2 positive breast cancer who had already been treated with Receptin and, in addition, had been treated with Ataxane and Anthracycline. And the disease had become resistant to these treatments. So these were a very, very difficult, very resistant group of tumors that these, these ladies were, were dealing with. Um, the treatments that they were randomized to receive were either conventional chemotherapy with the drug capecitabine, which is uh, an oral fluoropyrimidine, which is commonly given in the setting of prior anthracycline and taxane exposure. But the treatment arm got, in addition to the capecitabine, a novel molecularly targeted agent called lipatinib. Now, lipatinib is of particular interest because uh, it is a small molecule tyrosine kinase inhibitor which targets both the HER2 but also the EGFR receptors. Now, there have been previous presentations uh, of uh, more preliminary data from this trial, uh, data which, in fact, were presented when the independent data monitoring committee on the study mandated the suspension of accrual on the trial because of a superior outcome for patients who were treated on the treatment arm compared to control. So what we presented here was an update of those data, which shows that the data are robust. Um, there is a statistically significant prolongation of the time to progression associated with the use of capecitabine and lipatinib therapy compared to capecitabine alone. But in addition, we also had data uh, showing that there was a statistically significant benefit in terms of a reduction in the incidence of brain metastases in patients who are treated with uh, lipatinib. This is of particular interest because lipatinib, unlike Herceptin, uh, penetrates into the brain. Uh, and relapse in the brain is a common clinical problem now for patients with HER2-positive breast cancer who receive Herceptin. So it's possible that this may represent a superior therapeutic strategy for dealing with those brain metastases. Broadly speaking, the toxicity between the two arms of the trial were extremely similar. In fact, the only statistically significant toxicity differences were a higher incidence of the milder and moderate grades of diarrhea in patients who received the experimental treatment compared to control. The, 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 the incidence of very severe diarrhea was not higher, thankfully, uh, and other side effects were broadly similar between the two arms. Sometimes I think we in oncology have to pinch ourselves right now because there's been such a breathtaking pace of advance of new molecular treatments uh, over the last, uh, the last several years. Uh, and there is a tremendous focus right now on, on both uh, uh, small molecules which are available orally and also on antibody therapies against diverse targets and sometimes against the same target. Uh, in our group in Dublin City University, we have a particular research interest in trying to see if we can perhaps do better with HER2 breast cancers by targeting HER2 both with the antibody and with a small molecule tyrosine kinase inhibitor. But, you know, we're going to keep ourselves very busy for the next few years, I think, with very interesting research.